um, Congressman, what could the Re De Republicans do right now to get tougher on the Democrats in terms of impeachment? Dana, I think we need to keep hitting hard on the fact that they're literally trying to impeach a president behind closed doors. The fact that Adam Schiff continues today, all of last week, to conduct all of these hearings in secret. He doesn't even allow the press in. Members of Congress that are not on the relevant committees are being turned away from the hearings. Uh, that's, how, uh, that's how backroom shady this is. It's, a, it's not just a witch hunt, but literally it's being conducted out of public view, unlike what we've ever seen. All three times that we've had impeachment inquiries in the history of Congress, going back to Andrew Johnson, they've all been done first with a vote of the full house that wasn't done in this case uh, and then they've always been done in public people remember the nixon uh, hearings that were done in committee again everybody could watch it at home you can't watch it today the press is not even allowed in that room it makes you wonder what is adam schiff trying to hide from public view as they're trying to impeach the president with no known high crimes and misdemeanors they've been investigating this guy for over two years mm -hmm. the Mueller investigation that was going to produce their magical evidence that adam schiff remember he's the one who said he had more than circumstantial uh, evidence right. never showed it because it never but existed aside from complaining about the process which you might have very good points on that what else can you do because the, the democrats don't seem to be swayed at all by that well, you know, if you look at a lot of these members in these swing districts that Trump won, they're scared to death of having a vote. They don't want to go back home and say they, they voted to start impeaching the president, yet they're, they're allowing it to happen. They have a leadership that's allowing it to happen. I think the thing we need to do is continue to fight against uh, what they're trying to do in terms of this witch hunt uh, to expose it. And, and this is one of those cases uh, where sunshine is the best disinfectant from what is rotten to the core. And then also show the American people what's not getting done that should be getting done. Look, we would have a bill on the president's desk today to lower drug prices. There's all sorts of things. We had all kinds of things. You better trade deals. All of, the of these things, things that could be getting done. You have the chief of staff to the president. Um, he was on Fox News Sunday yesterday. And this back and forth continued about Ukraine and quid pro quo. Watch. You were asked specifically by Jonathan Carl was investigating Democrats, one of the conditions for holding up the aid. Was yeah. that part of the quid pro quo? And you said it happens all the time. Yeah, but go back and watch what I said before that. I don't know if you guys can cue it up or not. There was a long answer about corruption and a you, long no, answer you, you about totally said that. things you again said just a few seconds ago that I said there was a quid pro quo. Never use that language because there, there is not a quid pro quo. You, but you were asked I, by Jonathan Carl, is that you've and, described a quid pro quo and you said that happens all the well, time. And, and, and reporters will use their language all the time. So if my language never said quid pro quo. But so the, for, for your Republicans, is it harder to defend the White House when this is the kind of exchange you end up with on Thursday, Friday, and then Sunday. Well, and look, he's going to clean up what he said. What I keep telling people is get back to the facts. I've read the transcript just like you and so many people across this country. And by the way, you don't even need to read the transcript. Just listen to the two people that were on the call. It was President Trump and President Zelensky of Ukraine. Both of them have said uh, it was a good congratulatory call. There was no pressure. There was absolutely no quid pro quo. The transcript backs it up. And most importantly, the two people on the call said that there was no quid pro quo. And ultimately, Ukraine got the support. Before that phone call, by the way, President Trump was selling the Javelin missiles to Ukraine to push back Russian aggression from their tanks. Obama wouldn't even sell those yep. Javelin missiles. Right. And pointing back to the Obama administration, that, that, um is something that the president also wants to do looking into that 2016 and how the investigation got started but there's lots of different and there's still a lot that. of concerns there but the bottom line is we've been helping ukraine stand up to yep. russian aggression when president obama wouldn't do that president trump is actually so, helping him stand reaching up back into the 2016 box again there was news that was released late on friday night from the state department about hillary clinton's emails um, but it kind of got buried. I wanted to ask you about this because you were certainly well aware of it at the time. This is what the State Department said Friday night. Uh, while there were some instances of classified information being inappropriately introduced into an unclassified system, um, by and large, the individuals interviewed were aware of security policies, did their best to implement them, etc. There was no persuasive evidence of systemic, deliberate mishandling of classified information. Do you agree with that? Well, we still don't know enough about what was classified and unclassified, what bled into the secret server. One of the things that President Trump and President Zelensky talked about was CrowdStrike. And that was one of the companies at the heart of the 2016 interference by the Russians. We still, Dana, don't know all of the answers about so how the Russians tried in to Ukraine? interfere. There are, the there are reports that, not. well, there are some reports it is. The bottom line is, 
that ought to be investigated because that gives us answers to whether or not uh, we can find out more information about how the Russians tried to interfere with our election when Barack Obama was president again. That's when the interference happened. President Trump is trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. Part of that is to get into the bottom of what happened in Ukraine in 2016. Okay. So the president took a lot of questions today about Syria, and he has got particular strong feelings about it. Last week, the House voted with, I think, 129 Republicans joined together saying, we don't like the way this is going. Where do you think it will go now that the president does seem to be willing to allow some members of the military to stay, You've got a, a ceasefire, whether it's holding or not? Um, I just wonder where this is going, because Turkey said no sanctions. They, they ended up without sanctions, but if they break the ceasefire... Will happen. Yeah, we had a meeting at the White House last week that I was in with the president, and a number of things we were talking about. One is we don't want to see Turkey move further over towards the Russians. Uh, the other big issue is all of those ISIS terrorists that are still being held by the Kurds in prisons. Uh, we don't want them to escape. We want to make sure there's some kind of method uh, to to contain those terrorists. Now? Uh, we've gotten some uh, understanding that it will be the case, but we still don't know enough to know. We want to see a plan, and the president uh, is laying out a plan to make sure that those terrorists don't get uh, released again and go out and, and do more damage That's and harm. Be top of mind, indeed. All right, Congressman Scalise, thanks for being here. And in New Great York City, with you. we appreciate it. Great being with you, Dana.